there's a scene from the new Steve Jobs movie. And in it, Wozniak walks up to Jobs and says, what do you do? You're not an engineer. You're not a designer. You, I built the circuit board, and the graphical interface was stolen. Yet 15 times a day, I hear, Steve Jobs is a genius. So what do you do? And Jobs responds, musicians play their instruments, but I play the orchestra. And this, like many other great innovators and inventors, is Steve Jobs' strong suit. He demands the impossible, not only of his staff, but of the world. And in the process, introduced a revolutionary technology that changed the computing world forever. Unlike Jobs, I have always been interested in the engineering. And from a young age, I always wanted to know the why, what made our world tick. But you know, as, that, as I grew up, that kind of developed into a series of small projects. I built a you know, circuit on a breadboard first, and then a remote control blimp. Um, and these projects you know, kind of progressed, teaching me valuable skills along the way that I still use today. But they weren't so socially applicable projects. They didn't require anything more than basic engineering knowledge. And for me, that all changed when I was 16, with the Aurora Theater shooting less than 45 minutes away from my house. When I switched from solving my problems to trying to work on society, the firearm market has remained relatively stagnant for a number of years. There have been small improvements in weight, accuracy, even safety. But for the most part, it's remained unchanged. One of the most common firearms sold today is the Colt 1911, which was in fact developed in 1911, over 100 years ago. But there is a problem. And that problem has nothing to do with reliability or accuracy. After the Aurora Theater shooting, as I was introduced into the world of gun violence, I started to learn more about how complex of a problem gun violence is in America. And as with any true problem, this complexity means that there's a whole bunch of contributing factors. But I thought to myself, what can I do to solve a real problem? I'm someone who builds things that work. What can I do to solve a real problem? And for me, well, first of all, the primary mechanism of change for, you know, to prevent gun violence in this country is lawmaking. An act of gun violence occurs, and then there's a call for stricter laws. And these laws call for a restriction in firearms, ammunition, or who can use the firearm. And most of the time, these laws don't even pass. But even when they do, they're pretty ineffective. And so there's another act of gun violence, and the whole cycle starts over again. And so we need real change, not an argument about 10 rounds in a magazine versus 12. And so in this case, I was the one who built the circuit board, the circuit board for a smart gun that could change everything. When someone picks up my smart gun, it reads their fingerprint. And if their fingerprint is the, that of the owner or somebody the owner has chosen, then the firearm functions normally with no extra steps or anything required. If they're not, say a child or somebody who's stolen a weapon, it's completely useless, just as a brick of metal. This has incredible implications in the real world. 170,000 children and teens have been killed by firearms in the United States since 1963. During that same period of time, 50,000 US soldiers have died in combat in the Vietnam, Persian Gulf, Iraq, and Afghanistan wars combined, making it roughly 2.5 times as dangerous to be a child or a teen in America as a professional soldier. And many of these, many of these deaths are likely the result of accidents. It seems like every day I hear about something in the news where a child found a firearm and ended up shooting a sibling or a parent. And I don't want to live in a world where children have to grow up knowing that even before they knew what a firearm was, they just wanted to be like the people in the movie, that they contributed to a family member's death. 
in general, having a firearm in the house makes the probability of accidental, de accidental death four times as likely. And I want to have a world where having a firearm in the house makes a family safer, doesn't, not endangers them. Let's talk about suicide. The CDC estimates that there are almost a million suicide attempts in the United States every single year. The vast majority of these attempts are unsuccessful. Only one in 25 suicide attempts actually result in a death. And what's more, a 2002 study has shown that 90%, over 90% of suicide survivors do not go on to die of suicide, which means they've seek treatment and recover. But that all changes when you introduce firearms. Because unlike other methods that people use to commit suicide, firearms are irrevocably and very, very frequently lethal. There's no one in 25. It's one in one, or one in 9.8. And so, especially for teens, in the 15 to 24-year-old age group, suicide is the second leading cause of death. For those teenagers, most of them, most of those suicides with firearms, they obtained the weapons from their parents. And so a smart gun, they wouldn't have been able to use. So what I want to talk about next is smart guns. Smart guns could have, at the very least, reduced the number, if not completely eliminated, most of these tragedies. And but I'm not the first person to come up with this concept of smart guns. I'm not even the first person to see the problem. But smart guns were developed over 20 years ago with government funding. Just to put that in context, that was five years before products like the iPod and the revolutionary Motorola Razor flip phone. And these products worked. I've personally shot one of the products developed then, Jonathan Mossberg's iGun uses a magnetic ring and some electronics inside the barrel of a shotgun to enable or disable that shotgun if the owner has the right ring on. And it worked. You put the ring near, you have the ring on, and you try to fire the weapon, and it worked. You don't have the ring on, it doesn't. So his technology was reliable, manufacturable, and reasonably priced. Why don't we have eye guns everywhere? In four words, the market wasn't ready. People weren't willing to trust technology in life or death situations, they didn't understand why people would need smart guns. And so for me, I've always focused on the engineering approach to a problem, how to most efficiently solve a problem. And only recently have I started to realize that that might not be the most important factor in having a technology that can change the world. In fact, I'm not trying to at all discredit the importance of good engineering. It can be very difficult, and without it, no product can ever succeed. But in engineering has a very black or white outcome, very binary. It, the technology either works or it doesn't work. And I understood that. Everything else that I didn't understand was what was the problem. This project started as a science fair project. I was developing this for the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair. And because of that, the judges judge projects based on how well they use engineering to solve a problem. They don't consider how much more work it would take to actually have that technology impact a society. And that means that while I was overjoyed at having a project that had received top marks for its engineering merit, I didn't realize everything else. And that came to me when I started talking to more and more of my potential customers gun owners, and parents. And every time I talked to somebody knowledgeable about firearms, they'd have 15 minutes of questions for me before, you know, questions about how the technology worked, what would happen in this situation, what would happen in this situation. But, and every single person I talked to walked away from those conversations at the very least saying that they would recommend the technology to somebody else. Many people said that they would buy one outright. But it doesn't work. I don't have 15 minutes to talk to every single potential customer. It's just simply not feasible. And so when I received a grant 
from the Smart Tech Challenges Foundation, the group responsible for much of this resurgence, this second episode of Smart Firearms. I asked to not just have the lead to develop my technology, but also to act as a spokesman, somebody who could go out there and advocate for smart guns and the possible solution that they offer for gun violence in this country. And that's exactly what I did. Instead of just developing my technology like I had for the previous years, I spent the last year and a half traveling, speaking about this technology and the possible lives that it could save every single day. And it's been a roller coaster. Um, I've made quite a few mistakes. I accidentally launched an international press campaign on the same day as Jobs Legacy, a new iPhone announcement. Um, I've fumbled in front of cameras and talked so fast that nobody could understand me. But overall, it's been resoundingly successful. My message about smart firearms and the potential solution that they could produce has reached over 40 million people directly worldwide and in an uncountable number of their friends. And it's working. People I talk to who have no idea who I am, their opinions have been changing about smart firearms. And through all this, I've started to realize what Jobs knew all along, that the message, the perception of a product is far more important, if not the most important thing, about a technology, not the actual engineering development. And it, it can be depressing to face a new act of gun tragedy on the nightly news almost every single day. But the single greatest thing about America is that we continually destroy the status quo and erect a better one in its place over and over and over again. But that means that we can live in a world where children don't have to grow up knowing that in some way they were responsible for a family member's death. We can live in a world where firearm suicide is an extreme rarity instead of a commonplace event. A world where police officers don't have to fear their own weapons being used against them. We have the means to change. We can change. All we need is the will. The will as a nation to demand innovation and Expect technologies that work for us. Only through your choices can we demand solutions that can solve our problems. Thank you.